Hey, everybody. So, Nikola Tesla, a Serbian who naturalized as an American born on the 4th of July. Actually, I'm joking. He was born on the 10th of July, 1856. He died on the 7th of January, 1943, in the Waldorf Astoria in New York, alone and as a pauper. Now, during his lifetime, of course, he was a genius inventor. Who doesn't know about Nikola Tesla? But later in his lifetime, he became a, a bit mad as a bag of kittens and tried to marry a pigeon. But so what? He was a prolific inventor and self-publicist, and his inventions are with us today in the induction motor and the polyphase AC system that we use to supply our electricity. And he is also the subject of very many modern myths and conspiracy theories. In his early life, he was pretty much devoted to developing inventions that he could patent and market. However, he was also something of a humanist and philanthropist in his nature, with a desire to do something for his fellow man, which is probably what led to the development of the Wardenclyffe Tower project. The Wardenclyffe Tower project aimed at distributing power without the need for electrical wires and consequently without the need for billing. Not a particularly interesting project to the capitalists of the turn of the century, particularly George Westinghouse, who had been his main contributor. The Wardenclyffe Tower project burnt down in 1906. Central to the project was a large coil, which has later become to be known as the Tesla coil. It began its development in 1889, after Tesla had been to the Paris exhibition and learned of the work of Heinrich Hertz and his experiments that proved the existence of electromagnetic radiation, including radio waves. Tesla is said to have found this approach refreshing, and he decided to explore it more thoroughly. He tried to power a Rumkopf coil with a high-speed alternator that he'd been developing for his arc lighting system, but he found that the high frequency current overheated the iron core and melted the insulation between the primary and the secondary windings. To fix this problem, he came up with his oscillating transformer that used an air gap instead of insulating material between the primary and the secondary, and it had an iron core that could be moved in different positions. It later developed into the Tesla coil and could be used to produce high voltage, low current, high frequency alternating current electricity. And he would use this resonant transformer later in his wireless power work. At its essence, the Tesla coil is a resonant air core transformer. The coil operates based on the principles of electromagnetic induction and resonance, showcasing a unique ability to generate extremely high voltages through a phenomenon called electromagnetic resonance. The Tesla coil operates by feeding an alternating current into the primary coil, creating a magnetic field that induces a high voltage in the secondary coil through electromagnetic induction. The secondary coil, with many more windings than the primary, steps up this induced voltage to incredibly high levels, reaching millions of volts. What sets the Tesla coil apart is its ability to create spectacular electrical discharges known as streamers or sparks. These discharges occur at the top terminal of the coil, forming arcs of electricity that can extend several feet into the air. The distinct humming and crackling sound, along with the vivid light display, make Tesla coils both captivating and visually striking. In his public demonstrations, Tesla would light Geissler tubes, which were tube lights very similar to the fluorescent lights of today. He could even light incandescent light bulbs from across a stage, and he spent most of a decade working on this new form of lighting with the help of various investors. But unfortunately, none of those ventures succeeded. Tesla dreamed of using it for wireless power transmission. However, his ideas were ahead of the time, but the principles underlying his work have influenced modern wireless technologies. The Tesla coil today is a staple in science demonstrations and educational institutes and entertainment and they're showcased in museums and science centres and still captivate audiences with their dazzling displays of electrical arcs and still demonstrate the principles of electromagnetism and resonance. It is still a very popular thing to build. Unfortunately, it's also a little complicated and a bit difficult to tweak to get it to actually work impressively. Then along came the Slayer Exciter. It's actually a much simpler device, and it's named after its inventor, a user known as Slayer, on online forums. At its core, the Exciter operates on principles similar to those of the Tesla coil, but it's a much simpler and more compact form of device. 
It typically consists of just a few basic components, a power source, often a battery, a transistor, a feedback coil known as a tickler or exciter coil, a primary coil and an output device such as an LED or small lamp. The circuit operates in a self-oscillating manner, creating high frequency oscillations that produce a high voltage, low current output. The transistor in the circuit acts as a switch, rapidly turning the power supply on and off. This action, combined with the configuration of the coils and capacitors, induce a resonant effect that amplifies the voltage across the primary coil. If you want to, you can buy a Slayer Exciter kit on the internet and they're pretty reasonable prices. But they are stunningly easy devices to build from your own components you might have lying around or you might have scavenged. So what do you need to make it? Well, a bit of PVC pipe. This is about 1.5 inches in diameter. You need some wire for the secondary, that's the big, big coil that's going to go along the pipe. And this is 0.6 mil, it's uh, 22 gauge. The only reason it needs to be thin is because you need to get you know, 200, 300 turns on here. And if it's not thin enough, you're not going to get, get enough turns on there. You need some wire for the primary, which goes around the base. And you only need about five turns of that. This is about uh, tw gauge 12. You know, it doesn't, the thickness in this case doesn't really matter because we're not putting a lot of power through it. But, um, you know, just to just find some wire that looks reasonable. You can always try a different wire if it doesn't work, but it, it probably will. You need a transistor. This is just a 2N2222A transistor, NPN transistor. You know, it's a typical, it's just basically the most common transistor around. You need an LED. Well, you actually need a diode, but an using an LED, which is a diode, it's a light emitting diode, is really convenient because it will light up when the circuit's wired up correctly. So that's actually very handy. And you need a resistor. Now interestingly, I've noticed that the circuit works even without a resistor, but let's put one in anyway. So that's it. There's just one, two, three, four, five, six bits that we need there. The first step in winding the secondary is you need to attach the um, wire to the, to the PVC pipe. So I'm just going to use a little bit of tape here, a bit of duct tape, and I want to leave a little bit of excess there so that there's something to work with, you know, once it's wired up. So I'm not going to start right at the beginning. There you go. That's just um, put it on a bit. I might the next step is to wind three or four hundred turns of the secondary on the PVC pipe. You can do this in lots of different ways. You know, you could do this manually, you know, unfortunately, if you haven't got a lathe. We happen to have a lathe, and this makes it very easy to do. Okay, so this is how you wind a coil. Start it off and tape it down. Fix it firmly, because you're going to have to put quite a bit of force on it, so it's going to snap off. You don't have to worry about distorting the end there, because normally when you finish off the coil, it'll either spring back in place, or if you want to cut the end off, cut the end off once you fix this end of the coil. You need to keep a reasonable amount of tension on it, and with a slight bend that way so that the wire kind of laps onto there and then snaps back into place and you make a nice tight coil like that. Now keep the tension on, turn the lathe slowly to get it going. I've wound a couple of these to start it by hand, then I wound a few more and then I pulled it down onto it by turning the lathe off to make sure that the start was neat. Once you've got that bit going you can start the lathe up, don't turn it too quickly it'll wind all by itself. See those little gaps there? If you start getting little gaps there, just push it down with your thumbnail to neaten that up. So when you wound the coil, just finish the ends off neatly with a bit of tape. So you take a little bit, wind it around, tighten it up, give it a good pull, and then just wrap a bit of tape around it to make it look nice and neat. Because you put a fair bit of effort into it, so it should look nice. And there we go, there's our coil. The next stage in the coil construction is to wind the primary. This needs to overlap the secondary to get a good coupling. So what I'm going to do is just tape it on a little bit. And this is nowhere near as crucial as winding the secondary in terms of precision because it's a piece of cake. We only need five turns here. Okay, there we go. So the primary is now wound on. So that's 
I need to trim these off. Uh, I'm going to attach a little bit of wire onto there. And then we need to wire this thing up. So just to make it look neat, I'm going to put it on a board. So I want to wait to mount the coil to this piece of wood. I found this uh, little pot and it just so happens to fit perfectly on, to the, in, on the inside thread of the pipe. So I'm just going to glue that on and then I can just slot, slot the coil on. Right, so now we're going to construct the circuit. It's very simple, there's lots of ways you could put it together. You might want to solder the stuff together directly, you might just want to twist the wires together. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on a bit of perf board just to make it neat. So the circuit's very simple. If this is the, this is the transistor and with its flat facing backwards we have the collector, the base, the emitter. And now I'm going to put it in this little header because I know I'm going to burn some of these out, you know, messing around with the maximizing the power and so on. So this is how you're going to connect it up. To the collector, you're going to connect up one side of the primary coil and the other side of the primary coil is going to go to your power supply, your positive rail. To the base, what you want to connect up is a resistor, the other side of which will go to the positive rail. This is a 10k resistor, you might want to use a larger one or a smaller one, experiment around, 10k will do just fine. And then to the base, you also want to connect the LED and connect the negative side of the LED to the base and the positive side of the LED to ground because this is in the reverse direction, so from ground to the base. You can tell which is a positive because it's usually the longer one. Otherwise, check the spec sheet of your LED. Also to the base, you want to connect one of the wires of the secondary of your coil, so the big long coil. And then to the collector, the third pin here, collect this directly to ground. And that's actually it. That's all the connections you need to get it operating. Just to quickly show you, we've got the power source here, three volts plus. And on the positive rail, we've got 3.3K in my case. You probably want to put 10K on there. Going into your base of your transistor. Also going to, into the base of the transistor is one of the wires of the secondary. And also going into the base is the LED in this direction going into the base. Going into the collector of the transistor is your primary, and that's coming from your plus rail. And then the output of the transistor, the collector, so the emitter is going to ground. And what you'll observe here just with these two dots means that these coils are actually wound in the opposite direction. You don't have to worry about that because when you connect up your primary, what you're going to do is you're just going to switch the wires over until this LED lights. So don't worry about winding them in a particular direction on the PVC pipe. One of the things you'll need to do in order to connect the secondary is make an electrical contact with the end of the wire. Because it's enameled wire, the, uh, you've got to get the enamel off. I found the easiest way to do this is just to scrape it off with a razor blade. You know, turn it around and just scrape it off each side until it's all scraped off and then that makes a great electrical connection. There we go, finished circuit on perf board. Now just to wire it up and test it out. All right, the circuit's complete. Just a quick note about winding the primary. You've got to make sure that the polarity is right. It'll only work with them connected up in one direction. The way you can check that is that the LED will light once it's working. So let's connect it up to a 9 volt battery and check that out. Wireless power transfer. Look at that. That's amazing. Absolutely fantastic. And do it with a bigger CFL as well. Some, look at that. How cool is that? I just love that. That just blows me away. So there you go, that's how you build a Slayer circuit, a little bit about the history of it. And that was Ashley who did the presentation, who's gone on to Pastures Green. But it did occur to me that the Slayer circuit might be really interesting to use as a speaker. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.